Hello and welcome to another What's New video covering the features from Pandora's Box version 6.5.0. The version has been already released a couple days ago on October 15th and it can be downloaded on our website and the download center. The most important feature from this new version is our new render engine that we are so excited to share with you. Technically speaking, our render engine is not based on DirectX 9 anymore, but DirectX 11. And this sets ground for a lot of new features that will be coming in the next versions. One of the first features that comes with this render engine, however, can already be seen in this version 6.5. Two important features that are already based on this new render engine are more performance on the one hand and a higher color depth on the other hand. So Pandora's Box version 6.5 enables you to render in 10 bit on a server. Coming with that, we have also integrated a new image format to Pandora's Box version 6.5, which is called DPX. We have also updated our image converter to read and export those files. And at the end, I will show you another option from the render engine, which is called texture splitting, which enables you to get even more performance out of your machine. And lastly, there's the feature that you can now use also the audio tracks that come with an HDMI signal when you're using our input ports. In this video, I wanted to give you a little bit more information regarding color depth. I don't want to go too much into detail, so it's just the very basics that I think every Pandora's Box operator or user should have before using the new 10-bit rendering feature. We will have a look at standard color depth, what we are using up until today, and the differences to higher color depth. When you're using standard color depth, you are saving your images with 8-bit per channel. If you're doing a little bit of math, so 2 to the power of 8, we get 256 values or shades per color. So this means, for example, the red color. So you have 256 steps from the very darkest red to the very lightest one. In other words, the color depth also describes the ratio between the maximum and the minimum luminance. As I said, we have 256 values for each color channel. As we have three channels, red, green, and blue, we can multiply 256 three times with each other to receive 17 million colors. This might already sound a lot to you, However, the human eye can actually perceive much more. And this is the reason why the higher color depth is such an important step towards a better image quality. The higher color depth is defined to be everything above 8 bit per channel. So for now, we have a look at the 10 bit rendering. If you calculate 2 to the power of 10, you receive 1024 values or shades per color, which is four times as much as we had with the 8 bit rendering. If you calculate the total amount of colors, we actually receive 1 billion colors. So just a change of two bits per channel gives us so many more colors that we can use in the content. So whenever you had content in the path that even when using an uncompressed format showed your artifacts or color banding, especially for example when you had gradients, this is not a thing anymore when you're using 10-bit rendering. Another big step is that 10-bit rendering enables us to playback HDR content. I will talk about HDR in the next slide, but before we do that, I wanted to give you a little bit more, um, let's say, practical information when dealing with files with another color depth. As we've seen, the standard color depth is saving 8-bit per channel. However, this can also be called true color 24-bit, and this 24-bit simply results in adding up those channels. So as you see, this can be quite confusing. And this is just because the color depth is not really defined how it is meant. Depending on the software program or the image format, it can mean a bits per pixel or per channel, that is the RGB or transparency channel, or it can actually mean per file. I would like to show you how this looks like when you're using Photoshop or for example, the Windows File Explorer and answer the question, if you want to render in higher color depth and you receive 16 bit content, whether that is okay or not. Before we have a look at Photoshop, I would like to show you how it looks like in the Windows Explorer. If you turn on the column bit depth, you see here the information that Windows um, tells you that the file has. And the bit depth here relates to the bits per file. Um, so it adds up all the channels and displays here the number. The same information is seen in properties. In Pandora's Box, however, we are talking about um, bit depth per channel. So when we say 8-bit or 10-bit, we obviously mean the rendering per channel. And we have added the information to the inspector as well, um, that it tells you the color depth um, per channel for a file. So if somebody gives you um, wrongly labeled content, um, JPEGs cannot be saved to 16-bit. Um, you see right away in the inspector that this one is actually saved with 8-bit per channel. 
And the same thing is happening in Photoshop. Um, I'm sure other imaging software gives you the same information uh, or recording information. In Photoshop, they do it like this, that they tell you here the channel number. It's actually three channels. And here you see the abbreviation um, BPC, which stands for bits per channel. Unfortunately, I cannot show you how 10-bit content actually looks like. On the one hand, I'm recording this in 8-bit. And on the other hand, you're most likely watching this on an 8-bit display. So I thought, just to give you an idea, I would take Photoshop and reuse the color depth so that I could demonstrate the reverse effect, how much 2-bit actually matter. But after hours of work, it turned out that was a dead end. On my side, I saw the wanted results, which was obvious gradient banding due to the reduced shades per color or other artifacts. But once I looked at the YouTube content, all those errors were just smudged, thanks to the good job of video compression. But I think that you have all seen those pictures or movies where color banding shows up, for example, in a cloudy sky or in darker scenes of a movie, um, or especially in CGI content that is computer generated images. So all this content takes advantages from the higher color depth. Next, I want you to talk a little bit about uh, the term HDR, which stands for high dynamic range. HDR can be found in a lot of areas, um, so it can be a little bit confusing when you start researching it. The term that you want to be looking for is HDR video. This covers um, the content production and the rendering what is happening in Pandora's box. The HDR technology described as HDR image, or um, you might also f uh, know it from when you take pictures, for example, with your iPhone or any other camera, is something totally different. So you might know that um, when talking about HDR photos, they actually use an 8-bit technology and just boost up the image by um, mapping different images on top of each other, which were made with different exposures. Um, so when you activate the HDR function on your camera, it takes actually several photos and then merges them together. So you get one image that uses the 8-bit color range, but you do not have under or overexposed areas in your image. And that makes them look more realistic, but indeed they are still 8-bit files. So this technology has actually nothing to do when we are talking about the HDR video technology. Often the terms HDR and 10-bit are used kind of interchangeable, but indeed they are not. Um, they mean two very different technologies. So the HDR, what we are talking about, uses 10-bit technology. It is based on it. In the same way, it's based on the technology covering the white color gamut. So the standard color gamut describes um, how the colors are defined on CRT monitors, for example. In difference to the standard color gamut, the white color gamut, or short WCG, defines the primary colors um, to be more like the human eye actually sees them. So any monitor or projector that is capable to show you this white color gamut actually shows deeper and richer colors, and you will perceive them as more lifelike. So these three terms are kind of um, linked to each other like this. You have the 10-bit technology, you have the uh, white color gamut technology, and the HDR is based on those two. Altogether, you have um, better colors, you have brighter colors, and due to the 10-bit technology, you have smoother color transitions. So indeed, you have actually more colors that you can show in HDR. Probably the most important thing to remember from this sheet is that if you are using HDR or any other 10-bit content, you really, really have to make sure that you are using HDR throughout your entire signal chain, which means that you must use it during capturing, during processing, and during displaying. It makes absolute no sense to, um, for example, if you have 8-bit content and you have a display that is capable to show you actually 10-bit, it doesn't really make sense to process a 10 bit because we cannot put information where it's not provided by the content. And vice versa, if you have 10 bit content, but you are using an 8 bit display at the end, it does not make sense to process it in 10 bit because they are lost at the end anyways. So whenever you are enabling the 10 bit option in Pandora's box, make sure that your content provides it 
and that your display or projector is also capable to show you this 10-bit content or HDR content if you're using such. I found it helpful to keep in mind the signal chain with different resolutions. So if you have low res content, but you have, for example, a 4K monitor, the processing can also happen in this lower resolution in order to save performance. So it's very obvious that processing content in higher resolution uh, takes up much more performance. And in the same way, it takes more performance if you're processing files in 10 bit. So this is not only noticeable when you are copying content, but also when you are using it on the computer and render it. And this is also the reason why you can find the 10 bit render option for each client separately. If you want to activate it, first go to configuration, choose the category render engine, and next in the drop down, choose the client that you actually want to activate 10 bit rendering for. So in my case, I'm going to choose this one. This is a server. And under back buffer color depth, I can toggle to 10 bit. So again, whenever you enable the 10-bit option Pandora's box, make sure that your entire signal chain is based on the HDR technology or is using the 10-bit technology. Not only is it confusing that um, the term HDR is used in so many different fields, there are also different standards describing HDR content alone in the HDR video field. So today these four standards or profiles are the most important ones. Some mention that the content must be sampled with 10-bit um, or with 12-bit. But for Pandora's box, the only thing that actually is important is whether the profile uses meta information to um, store more information on how the data should be interpreted. So no matter whether it's static meta information or even dynamic meta information, Pandora's box does not read this meta information. So in short, Pandora's Box version 6.5 can encode 10-bit content, which includes HDR content, as long as it does not come with any meta information. So let's have a look what content you can import to Pandora's Box, which saves 10 or more bits per channel. When we look at the video formats, there are some QuickTime formats you can use, for example, some ProRes flavors or H.264 or 5. Looking at the image side or image sequence side, from the formats that we already supported, there is the TIFF format and the PNG format, which can be saved with 16 bit per channel. So you can either decide to save it with 8, or the next step is then with 16 bit per channel. As I already mentioned before, it takes a lot of more processing power and reduces your performance if your content provides a higher color depth that you can actually use. So the new format that we are supporting with this version is the DPX format, which is very much like the bitmap format. So it saves the file information in an uncompressed way. And this format is one of the very few ones that can actually be saved with a different variation of the color depths. So DPX files can be saved with 8 or 10 or 12 bit. The highest efficiencies that you can reach with Pandora's box if you want to play back uncompressed image sequences can be reached with the 10-bit DPX format. So to sum this up, these four image types um, provide a higher color depth when you are rendering with 10-bit. So as we have integrated the DPX format to Pandora's box, we have also integrated it to our tool, the image converter, which is now also capable of reading 16-bit files of PNG or TIFF. So when we have a look at the image converter, for example, by opening the tools menu from Pandora's box and choosing the image converter, you can use it as always. You can uh, convert single images or entire folders if you want to use them as image sequences. And as I mentioned, you can input PNG or TIFF with 16-bit or you can input DPX files, for example, with 12-bit, and then you can convert them to DPX 8-bit files using the RGB channel, or if you have transparency in there, or you can convert them to 10-bits, which is, which is the option that uh, gives you the highest performance because your content does not include unused bits that need to be processed anyhow. As I mentioned in the beginning, the new render engine comes with more performance. And this is because we have reworked pretty much everything, the entire engine. Not just effects, but also fundamental mechanisms, like how we handle or render videos. We improved image sequences, QuickTime videos, and large textures in general, and pushed pretty much every border we encountered. So altogether, limitations are pushed from the software to the hardware again, so that you can make the most of your existing hardware. 
And one of those hardware limitations can be seen on graphics card when loading certain content or rather under certain circumstances. And this is why we have added the option texture splitting. As the name suggests, this option leads to the behavior that textures are split internally, which has the effect that the system handles smaller textures instead of large ones, but obviously more of them. So when does this behavior make sense, you are probably wondering. And the answer, unfortunately, is not really straightforward as it depends on various factors. And this is the reason why the option is not enabled per default and why it should be enabled for each client separately. So just as we have seen it before, you can find it in the configuration tab from Pandora's box, in the category render engine. And after choosing your client, you can enable here the use texture splitting option. After testing this option with different hardware and content, we can recommend to enable it when using our current hardware, that is the R4 hardware, when using uncompressed formats, for example, video formats or uh, uncompressed image sequences, and when going with high resolutions like um, 1080p or above. And the result from this option is a higher show performance, as we call it. If you have a look at our performance sheets, you can find there two numbers. The maximum performance tells you how much content you can play back smoothly at the same time. And this means whilst the now pointer is inside, um, let's say, 10 containers on 10 different layers without loading or unloading other ones. So you are going into the containers, your now pointer is in there and the maximum performance tells you how much of those layers you can play back at the same time. As this is not really realistic or possible for all the shows, we have another figure, the so-called show performance. And this tells you how much content can be used whilst loading it or unloading other ones. And obviously this is a smaller number than the maximum performance. And this is exactly where the split textures come into play. Instead of suddenly telling the system to process one huge texture, which leads to a small or medium stutter in the playback of the other content, we process now smaller textures, which makes the loading step smoother. And this also explains why the texture splitting increases the show performance, but not the maximum performance, as this one is already on the very limit of the hardware. Currently, we are working on new performance sheets. Um, we are hoping to upload them soon to the download center. To give you one example from this performance sheet, when you have a current server hardware with a performance kit 5 and you want to play back uncompressed content with 60 FPS, you were able to play back 12 at the same time just before overloading the system. But only 6 of them, so indeed half of the layers, under the show circumstances. With a new version, the maximum limit, as I explained before, it cannot be pushed anymore, but the show performance allows now to load 10 content containers, which is now much closer to the maximum performance. So far to the increased performance that is possible with version 6.5. Let's have a look at the last feature, the HDMI audio option. After using the HDMI 2.0 input cards a while ago, we have now upgraded the feature set to allow the usage of all embedded audio channels that come with the HDMI signal. With this version, you can assign up to eight embedded channels to ASIO tracks, which allow fully synchronized playback of audio and video. Just keep in mind that the video part must be loaded too, otherwise we cannot de-embed the audio part. So in Pandora's box, when you are in the Assets tab, you would open the Live Inputs folder as usual, and next to the video part, you also now see the audio part with those eight channels. So simply drag them into your project and assign them to an ASIO track. So that's been all the features that we put into Pandora's Box version 6.5. If you have any more questions, please feel free to contact our sales or support team. Thank you for watching.